oh, this is going to be a great sister to sister. Here's a good question. Are there any scriptures that are confusing? And we're going to talk about some inspiring Bible characters and annoying Bible characters. I like them all. I like you too. Stay tuned. Welcome, welcome. Do you like our music? I really like our music. We're all kind of jamming to the music and we're looking forward to talking with you. And here's who we are, five beautiful, intelligent women of God. And what we do is we bring our answers from the Bible and our hearts to the questions that you ask us. You ask us these questions, you send them in. And here's what you said. You said, what's a scripture verse that's confusing to us? To me, to you, to Flo. Confusing. I'm confused. I know. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you're never confused. <laughs> you know, it's funny because you guys know how I am with certain questions, right? But this one kind of came to me right away. Um, because uh, when you think of death in the scriptures, I'm a little puzzled and I did, you know, maybe I need to do more, re not maybe, I need to do more research, but you know, there's scripture that says you fall asleep in Christ and the dead in Christ will rise. Then there's the scripture, you know, if you're absent from the body, you're present with the Lord. And then there's the scripture that says, you know, the saints are crying over the altar. How long, how long? So I'm like, what really scripturally that I can soundly say you know, happens when a person passes away. Are they asleep and when the trumpet sounds, they come out, you know, or are they in heaven right now at this moment from the time their soul departs their body? Yes. So, um, well, you know. That's what I think. Yeah, That's well, I, but, but, you know, I need scripture to support them yes. all. I think yes. I, if you ask me, what do I think or feel what I tend to lean towards and that's that, the moment that I close my eyes, the moment my soul leaves my body, I'm with the Lord. But there is scripture that also supports otherwise. So there, there you know, there's like well, two I schools of thoughts Jesus there. Said, Listen to this, this is how I learned it. Cause mm -hmm. I was a little Catholic girl and here's Jesus on the cross and here's the two bad guys. And, mm -hmm. and this bad guy saying, well, get us off of here. Mm -hmm. And this bad guy mm -hmm. said, That's I'm really scripture. sorry. And, and here's what Jesus says, today, today yeah. you will be with me in paradise. Yeah. So I'm yeah. going with that. So what do you do? I mean, really though, because when I think about it is, you know, one of the greatest apologetic tools is listening. And so when I listen to others, I've had people ask me, you know, Pastor Flo, what, what happens yeah. when, yeah. and they hit you with these scriptures and I'm kind of going, well, yeah, that is in the word, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. Well, what do you have, mm -hmm. Amy? Is it, what's confusing? A confusing one to me is Paul's I was given a thorn in my flesh. I've heard so yeah. many yeah. 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 sermons yeah, about the, one. I'm going to say was. the D-A-M thorn in the flesh. Yes. I mean, you know what I mean? Yes. Like, a darn thorn in yes. the flesh. Uh, what is that? Who was that? Was it a spirit? Was it a, per was it a thing that just kept, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. Did, but I mean, I think we've all felt like that, you know, that mm -hmm. there's just something always there, you know, that is, uh, you well, know. George thinks he had arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> George, George oh, is theological. George. Let George speak for himself. <laughs> no, Paul had arthritis. Well, it's not confusing it's anymore. Paul George had, answered yeah. it. Paul had arthritis, so I get it. What yeah. do you have? Confusing. Oh, man, mine isn't good like that. <laughs> <laughs> what are uh, you going to spell a swear word? <laughs> <laughs> not today. Maybe in my head. Uh, Proverbs 26 says, don't answer a fool. According to his folly, you'll be like him. Then the very next verse is answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. <laughs> and, That's confusing. Yeah, and I was trying to decipher through that. So I thought like this. Don't answer a fool on his same terms. You know how Jesus, yeah, when they right. asked him a foolish question, he gave him an answer oh, back. Right. But answer, but don't answer according to his folly toward the way he would do it, answer with truth. 
So uh, that was scripture bother me because sometimes I think, man, you're just talking foolish. I'm not going to even bother with mm -hmm. you. Proverbs, mm -hmm. the beginning of it. But God says, don't leave him alone. Mm -hmm. Help him out. You know, try to. And I'm sure I need that too when I'm talking foolish. That's good. Leave, it to, one. leave it to Roxy to answer her own confusion. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. I mean, just That's saying. a great point. She's like, I'm confused, but, but here's, here's the answer. answer. <laughs> I got it. Hey, okay, guys. I love these So, sisters. Roxy, could you clear up my confusion? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, I was always confused about God hardening people's hearts. Uh, like when it said at Exodus, like when God hardened Pharaoh's hearts. And I know it was like part of like the whole story and the plan good. and everything, but like it just confused me. It was like, why would God harden someone's heart? Like that was always real confusing to me. So, you know, when I get to heaven, that's one of the that's questions. That's the question, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's good. Oh, wow. Well, I have this really cool little question here and it goes like this. This is gonna be fun to hear your answers. Mm -hmm. Name a character in the Bible that you don't like, mm -hmm. and you have to tell us why. <laughs> Roxanne, do you have one? Oh, am I supposed to answer <laughs> this? <laughs> <laughs> if right. you want to. Okay, I'm gonna answer my own. What would you say? Very okay, not. okay. I'm gonna yeah. answer this like this. I'm not gonna answer you a person I don't like. I'm gonna t ask to answer you a person I think most people don't like. Okay. okay. But I kind of respect her. Well, it's a girl. Oh, it no. is a woman. Of oh. course it's a woman. Okay. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not being gender biased here. Uh, <laughs> the um, Queen Vashti. Oh. Yeah. Married mm. to the king. He's like mm. the king of all of Persia, 11 countries or something. I mean, this guy, guy could knock your head off. And he's having a big party with all his boys and uh, asks her to come and parade herself in when he's drunk. And she says, no. Can you imagine a person, the guts, it took this queen. Now, she gets a bad rap because the king dethrones her and sends her away. I'm glad he didn't kill her, of course. But she refused to parade in front of a bunch of partying men. And I give her credit for that. But the way it kind of... Well, the Bible doesn't say much about whether she was right or wrong, but I think many times to usher in Queen Esther, it occurred. But women have to realize you don't need to parade yourself. You don't need to prove yourself. Even if you're the queen, don't do what other people tell you. Do what's in here. Good I think message. You, you missed the point of this it question. Was, <laughs> I did. I usually do, don't I? <laughs> Wait, I, you, I, I want to rescue you. I want to rescue me. The real bad girl, like Jezebel. Okay. You know? all right, all right. Now the thing, don't you like? yeah. Well, the thing about Jezebel, okay, because you know we hear the Jezebel spirit, the Jezebel spirit. Oh, they have a Jezebel spirit, and the Jezebel spirit can really be male or female. Right. It's controlling. It's That's manipulative. Right. It's deceptive. It's divisive. It takes over, and I totally believe in it and agree with the Jezebel spirit. And if you read about Jezebel, I mean she was evil. And, um, but it also has been an abusive thing. A strong-willed woman, a woman who mm. said, you know, is confident or a woman who, it, they can say in the church, oh, she's a Jezebel spirit. And I'm thinking, man, you better, you better know what you're talking about before you label somebody a yeah. Jezebel spirit. Good. So even though she's like a bad girl and, that spirit is real and it's operating and it's dividing churches on the daily. Um, it has leaned yeah. toward abuse and misuse That's of women good. in the church. Oh, she's she's a, has a Jezebel spirit because she wants to lead the kids ministry because she's good at administration, telling people what to do. You know. You know, so I think yeah. we have to be careful. Oh, that's good. Because we don't like her. Anybody, who don't you like? Well, I mean, I don't know why it's all women that we're like not liking <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. But like, right. I'm still on the woman train because every month I get a little mad at Eve. I'm just saying. <laughs> I get a little angry at Eve for the whole curse thing that we got going on here. Yeah. Just saying. Well, I don't like Herod and he's a guy. <laughs> I thought you liked everybody. Well, I don't, but I don't <laughs> like Herod, so <laughs> all right. rewind. How about you? So I honestly don't know that I have anybody that I don't like. Ooh, I Harry. do. Mm, 
I think I learn um, from everybody because when you say character too, um, it's it, it, it there's an implication mm. there that it didn't really happen, like it's fictional, okay. you know? Mm. True, so, true. cause even with Herod, what I learned from Herod is how far jealousy can go. And jealousy mm. is as cruel as the grave. Yep. And so it carries the spirit of murder with it. Um, you talked wow. about Eve, I thought about Adam. And I'm thinking what I don't want to <laughs> do is not know my place and allow something to come in and usher and your so authority for me that God has given me. And then mm. it affects the generations down the line. Wow. Mm. That's pretty deep. You know, well, Talk I mean, that's generations. what happens. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You know right. what I mean? That's so, right. you know, because, you know, Adam had a role to play and he didn't play it. And I don't know what was going on in his mind or what was happening with him um, that Eve was able to do what she did as right. far as, you know, it's one, okay, so she ate the fruit, but mm -hmm. for him to partake of it, and we all are guilty of that on right. some level or right. an, another, right. you know, we right. partake of some things where we kind of know and hear, like, I'm not supposed to be doing that, but we can be swayed by yeah. other yeah, people. So, I, I, it, it's hard okay. to say I don't like them, okay. but I don't want to walk the there same you go. thing. That okay, they did. well, the, I have a, this instead of not liking, mm -hmm. th I want to know what you do like. So, yeah. Amy, here's, here's a question for you. An a, unnamed person, character, or a story yeah. in the Bible that inspired you? I have the best one. I love this lady in the Bible. Okay, she has no name. It just calls her a wise woman from the city. Mm -hmm. So 2 Samuel, and it's in chapter 20, you've got to read it, verses 14 through 22. It's so good. So Joab is leading the Israelite army. They want one bad guy. And they were told this one bad guy is in this city. And this wise woman who understands what's happening in her city sees this is not good. And Joab, why would you want to come destroy this city? What does she say? We are the... The, we are the faithful in Israel. Why would you destroy a city that is the mother in Israel? And he's like, well, I just want this one guy. And she says yeah. to him, give me a minute and I'll be back with his head. Yeah. Oh, and she yes. goes, that's good. So she had that much wisdom yep. to see what was coming in and out of her city. Wow that she went in with her influence, this wise woman, and she said, we need this guy's head. And they listen to her, right. they throw out the head, and he's like, thanks, peace out. Yeah, <laughs> City yeah. saved and rescued because of a wise, Amen. unnamed That's woman. Good. Wow. That's good. I, really good. I like that a lot. I, I, have, I, have, I have a second. I know I have a small story that's so unbelievable, and it's something that came to me when I was reading the questions. Yeah. And again, I'm answering today. What the heck? Go ahead. Um, it's First Chronicles 4. It's the prayer of Jabez. Mm -hmm. And do you know that in the middle of the, the history of Judah's genealogy, in the middle of it, this is what God has us read. Oh, there's a guy named Jabez. And the mother named him Jabez because it caused pain in childbirth. childbirth. This, this comes out of the total blue. And here's what Jabez says. Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. That your hand would be with me and you would keep me from evil. This yes. is Jabez. We don't even know who he is asking God. That I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. And then it went on to something else. The prayer of Jabez, yes. little tiny in Chronicles. Okay, go ahead, Kathy. No, go, <laughs> go, ahead, Kathy. go, Kathy. Go, Kathy. Go, Kathy. Go. go. He caused pain in birth. That was really funny. I can't remember that I like. Kathy. Oh. Oh. Surely, go. Oh, that was wow. perfect. Go. Was that me? It's you All now. right, she, I'm sorry, Corey again. No, I'm good. Record it <laughs> that I'm not answering the question. <laughs> she has a name. Okay. All right, that's Abigail. Man, she's my woman. So is that lady, I in, that unnamed lady. I, I got to read that. Chop his head Second off and have it Samuel. Seen in just a Woo. Abigail stood up to her foolish husband mm. who wouldn't yeah. feed David yeah. and his 400 men. She stood up to him and said, pardon me, my husband's foolish. And she fed him. And then she stood up to King David, who had 400 men that was about to kill her foolish husband. And she stood up to him. Could you imagine standing up to an army of 400 men? I mean, 
we read these things and they turn out well, but when they're going through this, these strong women, as you were saying, these strong women, would we have rebuked her for going against her husband today? Would we have? Think about it. As she intervened and God, and David recognized her wisdom, she stopped David from murdering somebody and then she stopped her foolish husband from being murdered. There Although he died later and David married her as there queen. But There you go. Hey, I just want to know from you a quick little Bible story of an unnamed person. Or named. Uh, unnamed? Okay. Yeah, whatever you want. Um, e e e Enoch and Job. Um, Job, because all of the heck he went through, he never lost his position with God, never right. lost right. his faith. You know, um, he was able to go through the tests. Um, Enoch, because of his, his heart, he just walked with God until he was no more. And off he went. That's it. Up. So good. Mm -hmm. This is so good today. Listen, stay right there because we have a very special mm -hmm. second half of this program. We'll be right back. Hello to all of you and welcome back. I alluded to a very special second half of the show and here's why. We've been together now for nine seasons. We know each other, we love each other, but we don't know everything about each other because we answer the questions that you send in. But right now, today, I'm so thrilled to have my sister Corey gonna tell a little bit more about her. And the easiest way for me to start with that, Corey, is, and I know we all have trials, but is there a specific time of pain or a time of joy that you'd wanna share with us? And really, you're sharing it with a lot of other people. <laughs> Sure. I am, before I do that, I'm going to jump back to the last question because okay. it sort of ties into that, believe it or not. So um, the small character in the Bible um, is from Esther, actually. We talked about Queen Vashti, and Esther is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. And so a character that jumped out to me last time I was reading Esther were actually the eunuchs. Okay, do we all know what eunuchs are? Yes. <laughs> They yes. were the castrated males that helped take care of the king's harem, basically. Um, and the eunuchs in Esther were really important. They were the ones that basically helped Esther get to her position. Like they prepared her for when she was going before the king. And the eunuchs were the ones that gave the messages between Esther and her uncle. So the famous line in Esther, um, for such a time as this, yep. was actually the message that was spoken by the eunuch to, between the uncle and oh, Esther. Wow. That was actually spoken by the eunuch. And that really stood out to me the last time I read Esther because I was like, you know, you know Esther is the name of the book and we, you know, it's, it's such a great book. But it's these, you know, minor characters that this eunuch could have literally, you know, given a different message. He could have thrown Esther under the bus. He could have, you know, taken the glory on for himself. But he carried out this message that was given to him. And it was part of God's plan. And that's part of my testimony because... I've had a uh, time in my life um, that was full of pain and I haven't talked about it a whole lot. I don't even know if you guys are aware of it, um, but I did have a mis miscarriage in my life. Um, and it was a time in my life when we had just um, recently moved. We were part of a new church. Um, so we didn't have a, you know, a big church family that you know, was very supportive um, because we didn't know a lot of people at that time. So it was a really painful time in my life. Um, and <clears throat> there was somebody that um, was, at, you know, a, a friend from the church that I, I didn't know very well um, that just stepped up and they brought a meal to me. And 
they're not somebody that's, you know, uh, you know, a big personality or somebody that has to be out front or a big character, mm -hmm. you know, like it, not somebody that is, you know, would be a main character in the Bible. They're somebody that might be considered a minor character, you know, and, um, but they were a big character in my life. Right. The little thing they did in my life really mattered and it, their actions in my life made such a difference and it turned that pain in my life into great joy because of that friendship that they developed and those little things they did for me. Um, and that person's actually here on set um, and, and she works here. It's, it's Laurie. She, is, she is, she is, um, she is one of the floor directors here and she's, um, there's a picture of her up there. Um, she's just a dear friend to me. I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm teasing up. Um, she's special to me. And, um, and I just am thankful to the Lord for her role in my life and how he's kind of weaved us together through being at Cornerstone together and um, bringing me here to sister to sister. And, you know, she, she works behind the scenes here, but you know, the Lord uses her on this show and all the other shows here at Cornerstone. And so I just want to encourage anybody that feels like maybe their, you know, testimony isn't, you know, this big grand thing or that, that they don't have a big role to play, that they don't, you know, they're not a singer or they're not a speaker, or, mm -hmm. you know, that they don't have maybe, um, you know, something that is out front. You have something to share you have a role to, to something that you can do for somebody. Mm -hmm. And it might not seem like something big, but just by Laurie bringing me a, a meal meant so much to me. And it, it changed my life. It meant so much to me. So that was a time of pain, but it really was a trajectory of, of leading to great joy in my life. Well, you are such a strong Christian woman your whole life. We, we hear about your parents and growing up. Well, was there another time that God showed up big in your life? You know, I, I thought a lot about this and, you know, I feel like, you know, I'm a, I'm a big personality. I like things big. I like things bright and glittery. And you guys know that I'm always <laughs> about the bling and the shoes and the glitter. <laughs> And, you know, I sometimes used to get frustrated about, um, you know, I didn't have this big testimony. I, I got saved when I was a little girl, you know, and there's, there's beauty in that. That's right. uh, there's beauty that I got to live my yes. whole life growing up under the shadow of his wings right. and that I didn't have to have this, um, you know, huge, painful turnover in my testimony. And I think, I think I want to, I want to share that, that it's, you know, I want to share the scripture about, um, you know, the time in, in first Kings where, um, I think it was Elijah. He went out and he, he stood in the Mount before the Lord and the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke the pieces of the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord wasn't in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, the Lord wasn't in the earthquake and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord wasn't in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. Amen. And so that's beautiful. where the Lord was. And so I just look back at my life and yeah, sure, the Lord is there plenty of times in big ways, right. but the Lord was there in all the little ways, yes. in all the in-betweens, in you. all the times that I didn't know he was there. That's when it matters. Right. All the times that he saved me from myself, all the times when he answered no to prayers that I thought that I needed or that I wanted, all the times when I didn't know what I needed, but he did. Well, I'll he tell was you there. What, what I need is um, a whole Corey show <laughs> yeah. next yeah. time. Oh. Stay right there. We're going to wrap this up. Thank you, sister. Wow. Yeah. Here on Sister to Sister, we always end with a scripture, and I got to pick the scripture today, so I picked my favorite 
favorite verse, and it's from my favorite book of the Bible, Romans. It's Romans 8, 26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. I love how the ESV puts it. It says, with groanings too deep for words. I remember the very first time that I read that scripture, it literally brought me to tears. Thinking about how deeply the Lord loves us, that he knows us so well, better than we know ourselves, when we don't even know what we should pray for. That the Spirit is crying out on our behalf. There is such peace in knowing that. As a parent, there are so many times when I am groaning out in a way with wordless groans for my children going through teens and adulthood. And I am just so thankful that we have a father that is doing the same for us and knows us so much better. So if you don't know what you ought to pray for, have peace in knowing that the Father is doing that for you. And it was so great to hear Corey's story today. And don't ever forget, you have a story too. And we have a scripture that goes like this. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman or a sister sharpen the other. See you next time.